Hey everyone, it's George Scarpacy back for a second day of live education here in New York. Today we're in Brooklyn in this fabulous studio in Dumbo, working with the one and only Peter Gray for I Am Beauty. Intelligent nutrients, a brand that you might have heard of from, uh, from the past. They've got a wonderful range of styling products. Peter's been working with them, creating content, developing uh, amazing imagery. And he's going to replicate some of that imagery live here on his beautiful model. Is it Sorel? Sorel, yeah. This is Sorel. She's got this beautiful long hair. Um, Peter, what's happening, brother? All right, Sorel. Thanks very much for coming in this morning, bright and early. All right, so what we've done is working for Intelligent Nutrients, I've been more of an image consultant and working on all the social media content and in the mass of content out there, it was like, how do we come up with something original and interesting that fits the brand and encourages other brands to kind of think outside the box? Because you know, it's not the only brand I work with, so you know, for me the most important thing is the fact that it's an environmental brand and we want everybody to be environmental at this stage of our lives, you know, the way we are on the planet at the moment. It's about a global concern. So what I did was, uh, what I'm going to do is replicate what I did in the desert um, in Dubai Mango Groves, actually just outside Abu Dhabi, uh, about an hour from Dubai. So Peter, we're working uh, today, if you're just joining us, we're working with Peter Gray, I know lots of you are just coming in. He's going to be styling long hair here using the I Am Beauty line, which is a, a beautiful, I've got some of the notes here because uh, most of these products are, are brand new. So this is an organic and natural plant-powered science on the basis of every I Am product. So that's what, one of the things that makes it special. There's a great history here, some of you might have heard of Horst Reckelbacher. He was the founder and now his family has continued to build and develop the line, um, so you know it comes from such a deep integrity. Uh, Peter, so tell us a little bit about Sorrel's hair and which products you use to prep it. Okay, so to start off with, Sorrel has something of a chemical treatment, um, a straightening treatment, from about how many months ago? Uh, eight months. Eight months, so we've got a fair space, usually about a hand's band is eight months, six to eight months. So all of this has been got chemical treatment on it plus the color. Through the top here, we have our natural texture, which tends towards the frizzy, and you can see there's a very strong kink at the root. So what I'm doing, I've just blow dried this out using a round brush, all the way through, section by section. Um, first product I used was the amplifier, amplifier hair head. style and restyler, and then I actually mix that with the gel, the flex to gel, use, to give us a little bit of extra hold. Because I didn't just want to follow them. I think it's something with long hair. People are scared to put product down at the root and you end up with the product down at the thinner ends, which is the last thing you want to do when you're styling long hair. Um, especially if you're grinding your hair or something like that, you want it to hold. So I wanted to mention to all of our followers and friends watching, um, if you have any questions about the brand, the Intelligent Nutrients is what it was always known. It's so much more than just that now, so it's Intelligent uh, Beauty Global, because there's skin care, there's hair care, this is like a whole kind of concern of making organic, science-led products. Gordon Nelson is on the feed here, and he's a representative. Um, so if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. All right, let's get deeper to the education now, Peter. Well, so, the smart ones, if you've got any technical questions, fire them to me. <laughs> all right, so what I'm doing is just technically, around the hairline, I'm just going to eradicate some of the little kinky bits, just holding it down, taking a section. Our viewers are so happy that you're a smiler. <laughs> uh, that's good news, it's not miserable. I gave her a heads up, don't, don't wince if I stick a pin in your head. Okay, okay, what is this that you're using here? We're getting interesting now. So this is actually a tool that um, Frank Rizieri uh, kind of pioneered. And and unfortunately, kind of before people ask, it's been discontinued. Yeah, so we sold it for years on Hairbrain Pro, but it's been discontinued. And it's basically a hot blade with a comb and you can run it in right on the hairline without any sort of fear of burning your customer, client, guest. And I'm just running that right across on the root, just to get a nice smooth hairline there. You can see the hairline feeling. And how does the product react? Because sometimes, you know, the wrong product with something like this can get really kind of sticky or flaky. There's 
no flake at all. I mean, this is this is really what I wanted to kind of stress is, you know, the exciting thing for me about this is, you know, with organic, people always go, who is their performance issue? Um, you know, where's the performance compromised? Um, it is definitely softer compared to, you know, chemical stylus, but that's the common. Okay. The noisy fire Besides the performance, which you're right, a lot of times things that are considered organic or natural, you have to compromise performance. It's substandard. Uh, but I was really impressed that there's a third party that certifies as organic. It's not anyone can say they're organic, but to be certified by an outside party, it just shows the dedication to being uh, having that integrity. I mean, it's kind of you know, designed to be bulletproof, to really break new ground, and you know, as I said, from my point of view. I want other brands to do the same. I want other brands to embrace the organic because you know it's a bit like recycling. If only one person does it, or only one company does it, we don't really achieve anything. You know, the idea is to propagate the concept. Um, competition is always healthy. So what I'm doing just rushing this through. Um, if anyone wants to know about my commitment to kind of organic, I'm using a tech brush. Um, it's really fantastic B Corp that comes out of Italy. Um, so, you know, with the type of work that you do, uh, it's mostly for a photo. Yeah. Um, at Peter Gray, editorial stylist, to work on campaigns with all the major beauty brands, covers of many magazines. And it's a little different from salon work, you know? Like that little extra detail, spending more time actually just brushing. Where it might seem like, oh, wow, that's brushing your hair for a really long time. And this is probably the fourth different type of brush you use. Yeah, so Talk a little bit about that. Like, why do you have to be so on point with the camera? Well, because the cameras now, phones aside, have got extremely high depth. So I'm just literally worried. You know, you're concerned with tiny, tiny little details. Spray. A flex form hairspray. Which actually is fantastic because normally a wet hairspray would cause the curl to kind of reactivate. In this case, it's very dry and it works extremely well. And it's been tested in the desert at 47 degrees centigrade, which is something like 100 plus in, uh, in Fahrenheit. Right, so. Yeah, for a few people that were asking, uh, Peter was using a tool that unfortunately has been discontinued. It, it's like a root control iron. It was made by a brand called R Session. We sold them for many years, but unfortunately it's been discontinued. Maybe they'll come back sometime, or maybe there's something else out there. We have to get Frank and Co. to get it, get it together again. So it looks like you're beginning to, you've, you've come in, you've smoothed the root, you've used Absolutely. three or four different brushes to get the, the smoothness. Get like a nice work. finish. It looks like you're carving out a triangle there. What's the, uh, what's the purpose? Carving out what you would traditionally think of as a fringe section. So this is the big thing that I've always got across. I had a 15 year history of teaching at Sassoon's. So, and really, hair, hair styling, hair dressing, people always who cut hair think it's a foreign language. But the sections are all the same. How you break the head up into, into sections is exactly the same as you would for a haircut. So the cleanliness is very important, even if you're wanting a soft texture. So I'm taking a very nice clean section here around the fringe area, and I'm just gonna keep all that out of the way. Our good buddy Gordon, who's manning the questions there, he's a sales director for the company. So any questions that you have about breaking intelligent line? You know, clients more and more are concerned with the products that their hairdressers are using. Um, so having something like the Intelligent Beauty line, Iron Beauty in the salon makes a huge difference. He, he wanted me to mention that this Flex Form hairspray went through 21 iterations before they landed on this final formula to meet the standards of the brand. I think this is also something very exciting, how things are changing. I think salons, you know, the one thing is with booth rental, people have been able to have, you know, take 
three or four of each brand that they like, the best performers from every brand. And I think that's really a modern way of stocking product and utilizing product. And I think, you know, there are going to be some salons breaking ground really fast in the next sort of six months to a year. I think breaking away from that traditional salon model where you have to stock an entire line. Now, Peter, I think what you're doing here is inspired by a shoot you did in Iceland. I, no, this is actually Abu Dhabi. Oh, Abu Dhabi. I think it was another shoot altogether. Okay, okay. That's, right. coming. That's still coming. Well, I, I guess it, my question is kind of the same, whether it be Iceland or Abu Dhabi, you're dealing with extreme conditions. Um, you know, and you're probably not working in a studio. No. So, you know, what do you do about tool and, you know, so Iceland, I would imagine, is dry and cold and then Abu Dhabi is hot and humid. Yeah. Like, did, did, did you find the product worked well in both different Absolutely. climates? And for me, really, this whole idea of having the month by month on different hair, um, our first model was uh, a lady out of, um, who actually lives in Dubai. Um, she's currently 57 years old. She's an ultra marathon runner and she's about to enter her um, first uh, bikini pro competition, which is a bodybuilding competition at 57. We're just going to rotate here a little so you can get a live on that section. Thanks, Kill. So Bobby Green does have a question. She says, how do the products perform in high humidity? So I imagine now, but it's a desert. I don't know, is it dry or is it humid? Uh, you read a mangrove swamp. It's extremely humid. Okay. At 47 degrees, you're like looking at about 80% humidity. Um, extremely well. Um, extremely well. Um, the hairspray stayed brushable. And that to me, you know, when, when someone says that the hairspray is brushable, I'm always very cynical because I've had years of illness. So I'm looking at it kind of going, I need my helmet. Your buddy Angelo de Pascas is live from Rome. Uh, you know, we've got the globe trotting hair. Oh, so how's it going, Angelo? So, what I'm using here, this is a bit of dressmaking elastic. Comes in a couple of different shades, multiple colors. I'm going to pick up a blonde today. I'll give Kelly the black to hold. And so, we've got a blonde, blends in reasonably. And I'm just going to take a snip of that. So rather than like using rubber bands or blacks or anything, you just cut your own? I don't like it. Yeah, I, I like this. I've got, you know, I feel like I get a more tension out of it. So you get this from like a sewing shop or something like oh, that? Abadashi. Abadashi. It's a big part of the editorial world, isn't it? You don't use any like pre-made uh, rubber bands or spreadsheet it's, things. There's kind of like an elitism to it. Uh, it's... All right, so one thing that happens with humidity is hair collapses, hair slips. So I was looking for a way, um, Caroline said, you know, she loves to wear her hair in a top knot. And I was like, okay, that's great. She said, but it always slips, because the humidity obviously causes the entire hair to swell. So wherever you pin the hair in, it slips out. Um, any sort of pinning that you've got, just literally pull the pins out as each individual hair swells. If you can imagine the millions of hairs swelling individually, becomes very really tough. So what I'm doing is I'm just a little bit around there and I've got a little bit of this flex on hairspray on my hand and I'm just running gently gently over the surface all the way around that circle I've taken at the crown. Now what what is the difference? I mean now I know that um, an aerosol spray obviously something that is not great for the environment. It's probably why Absolutely. there isn't one in the line. What's the difference of like a wet pump spray like that with a typical aerosol? Um, CFCs. I mean, CFC. what, what it drives it? To kill us, right? It, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's really what's, you know, largely, if, we, if we're talking about beauty products and the hole in the ozone, the, the CFCs are what's doing it. Um, not to say that, you know, it's the only thing I'm going to use per, on an ongoing basis forever. Right, well, let's get back to the CFCs. This is such an interesting okay. part. So how, what do you do with that string there? Okay, so what I'm doing is winding it round the base, grabbing it, and I'm using my thumb to secure the first bit. When I pick up both of those pieces there, and I can pull them vertically, can I just ask Sorel to keep nice and still? I can grab side to side on that elastic. And then I'm just going to loop it once loop it twice and I'm going to ask Gerard to grab that bit of elastic there 
and to pull nice and firmly, really firmly, really firmly. Okay, I'm going to take it off him. Okay, and you pull it and then you cross it. Okay, at that point you've got a complete lock, but you've also got the facility to undo that and pull it out if I need to. If I feel like that needs to go higher, on the, on closer to the point of the head, I literally just pull one piece of it and it's out. So that, you know, because perfect ponytail is kind of every, it's the foundation of so much editorial styling. Absolutely. And if it's not quite perfect, you can't freak out. You take it out easily and do it again. Tip your head back a little. Right, so go through the whole process. Okay. Just walk so us through. Done, got that little circle on top. Why the head back? So why the head back? Because really at this point, I want as much of the skin tight in the back of the neck. And I want to actually shift this. Getting a facelift. <laughs> <under it. laughs> Literally. So you're pulling the top of the scalp through. So grab that under your thumb. And then I just pull this through and wrap it around. Over. So wrap it over. over. So it's now around that little ponytail base that I'm holding in my fist. And I'm controlling it really easily now. Not too much tension. And I've tipped her head back so that I can move it higher on her head, you'll see. So I pull it up, pull them together, hold it at the base. So full control now. I do it once, twice. Grab that and just pull gently, no jiggling. And if you don't have an assistant to hold this piece, what do you do? Use your teeth. Use your teeth. <laughs> or maybe ask the model to hold yeah, it. Ask yeah. the model to hold it. Yeah. So at that point, we've got our lock. So if I turn this around, around now, you can see that that central point has it's moved up super tight and slightly clean. high, yeah. and it's extremely firm. And again, th this right here is the base of so much, let's call it editorial warm hairdressing. If you don't, can't do perfect ponytails, you have nothing to build on, am I right? So from that point, well absolutely, it's yeah. a foundation. So I mean, with this foundation, I can build anything on top. So I'm going to do, start off doing something very simple. Now, and then you cut those bits a off. A little tension in that, and you pull it up, and you hold the scissors flat, flat to the head, so there's no risk of doing anything, and you can see. I'm left with absolute minimum bunny ears. Clean as Those clear. little bits sticking out. One quick question, why not, so, you know, some stylists will work with a, an elastic of bungees on, hooks on both sides, they call them bungees. Why do you not? Very uncomfortable for the customer unless they put the hook in themselves. Mm. Um, and the chance of scraping on the scalp is very, very, yeah, it's increased massively. And it's just not something I entertain. I don't stop going out bungees and like that in my case pattern. I'm just going to go over the surface, around that little area, around that circle, around the edges of the circle. Yeah. And again, I know people love asking about this tool. I have to say, unfortunately, it was discontinued a while ago. We sold them on Hairbrain Pro for many years for root control. Uh, if it comes back, I'll be the first to let you know. So just a heads up, if you're like, what is that? Because I can see all the questions. What is that? Why are you using it? It's like a hot comb, just to control it's literally roots. a hot press yeah. comb. I mean, you know, a traditional comb, um, you know, for African-American hair would be put in an oven or a stove. Um, well, know. this has a hot iron in the middle and then I can comb around it. Oh, so. Absolutely. It just gives you a little bit more control. Um, yeah, I didn't think to bring the stove today would be that appropriate. <laughs> All right, so let me go back to our profile. So at this point, we've got a really nice high pony. Lots of stability, and I can do anything I want up here. I could start dressing this piece, I could back over this, I could do multiple banding and have like a spear on top. Um, I've got the triangular section out to the front just so that I've got room to play and finish with the head. But I'm going to do something very simple. I'm just going to pull this hair back all the way around the face. So, another brush change. But how many different brushes do you typically use on style? And why is that so important? Where someone's like, well, I could just use one brush to do all this. You water. can. I could use the Mason and Pearson, but the problem is with the Mason and Pearson or a Mason and Pearson style brush, um, you're looking at a bevel the opposite way. So it's a camber. We look at the, the difference here. That one's head shaped. This one's head, yeah. exactly. You hit it right on the head there, it's head shaped. So it fits in right down into the ear there. I can grab all those little hairs that are always tricky. Okay, again, if I want a little bit of spray on the brush, I can control it. And that's the flex form hairspray the flex again. Flex form hairspray yeah. again. And I'm just literally putting it right on the tip of the brush 
give the brush a shake so it's not wet. So this is considered a, a medium hold um, and it's got reworkable finish. So what does that mean to you, reworkable finish? So reworkable means brushable. And I'm actually gonna do a full second style to prove that because again, you know, I'm not in the business of selling anything. I'm in the business of utilizing product and if it performs, I love it. If it doesn't perform, it doesn't matter how much you, you know, try and sell it to somebody, they're not gonna to want to use it. So a workable hold, and then of course what's super important here is that it's aerosol free, because as you mentioned, CFC products is what's, and it's also super bad for your lungs, yeah, right. besides the atmosphere, Typical. it's one of the things, one of the reasons why hairdressers have problems with their lungs. So if you can find a spray that is an aerosol that does what you need, like the Flexform from Peter, you're doing yourself a huge, huge service, your lungs as well. Post-COVID, I'm doing everything I can to protect my lungs. They took a hammering. All right, so now you're gathering all that hair together. Yep. And again, it's been pre pre I'm going to ask you to take yep. that spray and just to give me a nice little spread on that little product. That's perfect. Okay, and I'm going to put that in. Did you guys get that on camera? Get my... It's <laughs> very smooth. Okay. It's very smooth. This isn't the first time I've assisted people. We were talking about that actually. I think it was in a football stadium, yeah. wasn't it? We took over an entire football stadium for a shoot with Mark Zellinger. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. And I mean, that's the thing with someone like Peter. He's got this salon history, almost years at Sassoon, working in the salon, doing education, and then an equal amount of time working with incredible photographers, which creates this eye. You mentioned Mark Zellinger is one of the top photographers in the world. I was like dumbstruck to work with him. Okay, another bit of that elastic there. Yeah. Oh, well. 20 centimeters would be perfect. Okay. Oh, well. yeah, that's perfect. I'm just pulling this through very gently. I don't want anything too tight. So the, the advantage of this is I don't have to make this too tight. I can make it as tight as I want, but I'm able to feed this through into my hand, controlling it, controlling it. I can get a nice finish on it. Make sure I like the shape. You know, it's this, what he's doing right now for like hair cutters out there is like doing the perfect one like ball. Or for colorists, it's like doing the perfect highlights that come right from the root with no banding, no bleeding. It's like something that's considered super simple, but by no means easy. Right, that perfect pony. Yeah, that's a lot of hair to deal with. It's a lot of hair. The length is long, yeah. and I mean, obviously the texture is yeah, something to consider. And just back a little bit. I mean, without product in the hair, could you even do this? Not really. So I mean, that preparation is absolutely so important. And I think the, that's a lot of the problem when people are trying to do ponytails, they're trying to learn ponytails, they try and take shortcuts. Um, you know. The direction of the root being controlled with product, in this case, you use a little bit of the Amplify absolutely. and the Flexform gel. Just to give us a little bit of hold and volume. Control the root, change the direction, and, and give it volume. Okay. And I can actually use my. You can see underneath there, I can control it to give a little bit of padding to the head so it's not unflatteringly tight on the head. Yeah, I don't like it to look too face lifty around the face. Okay, same thing with the elastic. Hold it down with your thumb and wrap it round again. So it, it, every time you wrap it, it's on top of the original piece. Ab absolutely. That's how I remember yep. you teaching it to exactly. me Exactly. So we're pulling it through, pulling it through, pulling it through. Get that tension. And it makes like a little, it doesn't make a face. knot, it just makes like yeah, it a... It just gives you that tension on both sides. And the thing to do is not to wriggle it like that. That's very uncomfortable. You know, really not pleasant for... And you don't make any type of knot until the end here. These right two at the little... end. And I'm going to ask you to hold that one again. And we pull in opposite directions, nice and gently. Just really gently, nice and strong. Okay, and at that point I can take it from you, pull it, lock it in the opposite direction. I can now look at this shape all the way around. I push the girl's hair forward a little. Thank you, sorry about that bit in your face. And I'm going back now. Oh, we've got a shout out from the West Coast from our good friend Gino Chapman. Oh, our West Coast oh, brother. There's my brother from another mother. I'm sure we'll all be together real soon. Peter and I are both headed to LA pretty soon. So I think we'll be doing some more lives from there and uh, some more content for our friends at IM Beauty. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you, Gino. All right. Okay. And working all the way around here. You know, it's so interesting because I, I'm watching along and as I, as I said, you know, being a salon hairdresser, we do pretty work, but 
these like little level of finish, the difference, like I can see where it's shining, I can see that ability to work more editorially, thinking about the camera. I mean, I think this is the thing, you know, we take, often take pictures in the summer and the afternoon, we've done a client, and we, you know, it's disappointing that often, because we haven't considered that, you know, if you're looking for a shine line, something as simple as putting spray on the back of your brush, and just running it in an area over there, and you should be able to see a nice little shine line starting there now. And th it's those little tips and tricks that will kind of elevate your salon work and elevate your photographic work. Now, I always th say that it's not just about locking yourself down in the salon. Doing, taking photographs of your work is like a whole education. I mean, I'll say, I say this in a good way, like the hair on camera actually looks even better than in person. I, that, I mean that in a good way. Right, no, that's the difference with the editorial. It's like, it, it's just getting to a certain way that the camera responds. Where even though it looks really clean and perfect, I mean, look, look at it here, so you can see what I mean. Yeah, double knots. Yeah. So there's a little angle. So I've just seen in the picture there. So this is what I'm going to use backstage for. So I can see the angle needs changing a wee bit here. I'm just going to push that angle up there a little bit closer. Right. And if you're looking to push that hair underneath there, you run the tail comb in and you just push it underneath. Just push it underneath. And don't worry about it bunching at the root. You know, people, will, if it's a clean pony and you're going to see that, then I can redo it. But at the moment, I'm not. So there's no point in spending a huge amount of time and energy. All right. Now but is this where the kind of reworkable aspect of the flex form comes Absolutely. in? Because if you had like spray that on and you couldn't work with it, so this is the non aerosol flex form hairspray, re reworkable hairspray. Which is like, you know, it's a real first as far as I'm concerned with organic hair sprays. And one of the things that you'll notice is all these different certifications. IN gets certified by third party certifiers. So it's one thing for a company to say we're organic, we're natural, our ingredients are pure. It's another to make it and then get a third party to come in and certify you. And that shows the integrity there behind the brand. So Peter, before you get into explaining the next bit here, as you mentioned in the beginning, you're someone who through your you know, almost 40 year career has had the luxury of working with every brand. And even now, every brand will work with you. So why choose to work with you know, kind of a, a small you know, family run business, female led business, I'd love you to talk about that. I mean, um, that's precisely yeah. it, that it's small, that it's female led, it's predominantly, sorry about this Gordon, but you are the only man in the office, I believe. <laughs> um, but you know, from that point of view, it's just exciting for me because it, women kind of get women's beauty. And I look at, and you know, look at your own beauty cabinet. You don't have one brand in there. So to stand here and sell you one brand, you know, or tell you, you know, implicitly I only ever use one brand, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, for me, I want the best performing uh, skew from every brand or the best performing item from every brand. Um, and I want to know why they're best performing. Um, you know, with organic hairsprays, they often just add gua. So what I'm doing here, just before I get too far down, is I'm taking a little bit of the hairspray and I'm putting it onto my fingers, fingertips, and I've taken a little tiny section. Now, I've seen, you've probably seen this done and then had a U-pin put into it. For me, that's pretty barbaric. Um, I, I want to be able to wind that around and not see the ponytail base. So that's a piece of her hair. That's a that piece of her hair. That you've just put flex form on and you're wrapping it around to hide the ponytail. So I can at this stage put a tiny bit more hairspray on the back, run it up the back, and just give you an idea so you can see how clean your little ponytail is covered. So if that was going to be visible, that's where I would leave it at. So one thing we haven't mentioned is the aroma, uh, certified organic aroma, but just such a beautiful aroma. I, I mean, I'm not the best at identifying aroma, but I think it's like a citrusy. I mean, it is, uh, yeah. very citrusy. I mean, the, the exciting thing to me, the difference between the reason companies use fragrance and product theory. Because um, it stinks naturally, it's right? It's yeah. 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 It's literally to mask. Like if, if that product didn't have the fragrance, it would smell it really, really bad. So when you tell, when someone tells you something's natural and it's got perfume in it, you know that it's not natural because there would be no necessity for that. Um, you know, you're looking, using uh, things like essential oils and essential oil distillates, which are a lot more expensive. 
but you know, for me, that that again is the commitment. It's you know, not not really worrying about the bottom line, and that that's the sign of a good company for me. Kelly, when you get a sec, get, just get a shot of the product range here, because I know people are familiar with Intelligent Nutrients even from the years when Horse first launched it. But now here we are, I think, 15 or 20 years in, and the brand is really refreshed. And this is all the brand new packaging, the new look of the hair care, the skin care as well, which I personally love. And this is going to be making it into my backpack before I leave today. Thank you, Intelligent Nutrients. Great skincare. Um, skincare is packaged in glass, which is, you know, shows that uh, integrity of, of caring for packaging makes a huge difference. Recyclability, yeah. isn't it? I mean, you know, it is glass really at the moment is the most recyclable packaging you can get. So, you know, it's also, we're at 90% um, um, HDPE which actually you could do 100%, but it's not as easily recycled. So that's why they do the 90%, because it's more easily recycled, so. Okay, so what's happening here? So I'm taking a pin, I'm just popping it in, all the way across underneath, and I'm just gonna carry on wrapping that around. Bear in mind that this now doesn't need to be super tight. I can just like wrap that to create like a nice base, I can create a nice shape, I put a pin in, a, the, ta the tail comb in there to kind of get, just hold it in a point to a point where I like feel comfortable. I like the shape. And all you're doing is creating a base at this point. And if you don't like it, well, undo it and, and start again. Explain again why why put the tail comb in there. So like the that. tail comb gives me a fulcrum, a central point. So you know I would normally get someone to hold it, but because that ponytail is in there so tight and so firmly. I can now literally just wrap the hair all the way around that, give me a nice shape at the base. And it's a nice way of working, you know, if you don't have an assistant handy in the salon or you're doing, doing a bride and you know, things are a little bit hectic back at doing the bride and the bride's mom's kicking off, you can do things on your own. I'd like to say that with an understanding of what, what it's like to do weddings, I assure you. I try my hardest not to. So what I've done is I've just pinned the hair, the pins into her hair. Now, if you want to hide a pin, don't push it in side to side like that. Push it in, first of all, to the surface, pinch it, push it in, rotate it, let it pinch, rotate it back, push it all the way in, and then run the top surface over it. Now, is that a pin that's going to stay in there permanently, or is that, that just kind of like a stay. placeholder? No, it'll okay. stay. That one I'm going to leave there. And that's like a U-pin that just has like that's a grip a on the texture? Pin. Yeah, it's Japanese U-pin, so they've got like a... It's a, almost a serration to the top surface of it. Uh, I don't think we're going to see this one, so I'm going to push this one in underneath. And again, nice and flat on the head, and this is going right underneath that elastic. And she didn't win, so I know I'm okay. If you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Scarpacy, Craft Hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. I'm here with my good buddy, Peter Gray. We've worked together for many years. It's such a pleasure to work together on a brand that we both love. Uh, Intelligent Beauty, IN Beauty, IN Beauty Global, uh, Hair Care, Skin Care, a um, company that Peter's been working on for years and helping to build a relationship with Hairbrain, so we really appreciate that. Um, he's doing beautiful long hair styling on Sorel. Sorel, who's like, the best at smiling and looking happy while she gets her hair done, which oh, is fantastic. Nice We've got Gordon Nelson, who's the sales director for the brand. So if you're in a salon or a studio and you're looking for something that has a true history of integrity, I keep using the word integrity because it means so much, you know? Uh, it's easy in today's day and age to say something. We know the buzzwords, it's organic, it's natural, it's this, it's that. But something that comes from the Reckelbacher family comes through from the family of Morris into his daughter uh, and his partner, and they've carried on, and it's a female-led brand, which I think is really something super interesting. If you guys want to learn more about that, I did an interview um, with uh, Nicole Reckelbacher. Oh, very um, it's on, it's on, and a lot of people have mentioned it to me, so you go on Hairbrain's Instagram page, and you go through our Instagram TV, and we did about a 40-minute discussion that was, I mean, to think of someone that owns a beauty company who was so honest and just herself it was pretty amazing. So check that out, guys. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so I'm back combing at the front here to give me a little bit of volume. Now, back combing, 
I know people have seen people like at it going crazy. Um, I'm doing it on the inside edge rather than the outside edge, so I'm not brushing it out. And I'm counting. I did seven, five, and I'm going to probably do one, two, three, might do four. There we go. So we've effectively, when I hold that out, got more back combing at the front, following the candle of the head, and then less towards the back. This back piece here, I'm not actually going to back comb it really at all. I think I can just throw it through. Now, I can go through in the opposite direction now and create something interesting. So I love these little pieces hanging. I think they're nice and soft and feminine. So I'm going to use that and just brush over the surface gently. How are you doing under this, Ron? Great. Good? Picking up that little piece from the back. And this is the great thing about the comb in the head here. It's just holding everything in place. You know, if I bump that knot, it's not going to fall out, do anything crazy, you know, undo all the work that I've done. So I, a question that I think a lot of people who are watching would, would ask, you know, because they have that aspiration to do what you do, travel the globe, work on magazines, work on fashion shows. But that's not how you started. You started as a salon hairdresser. Yep. And you, you know, nobody like rolled out the red carpet for you. You made this happen. Yep. So how do you do that? How do you get from being behind your chair, 40 clients a week, to traveling the world, doing Vogue magazine, and doing the things that you do? Um, saying yes to absolutely everything. Um, no is not really in my vocabulary. So it makes it kind of interesting in that respect. I was at Sassoon's in Manchester. That's where I started, and I was very fortunate to have like incredible mentors there back then. Um, you know, people within the company. I was at Casley and Co. in Covent Garden before that, which was kind of an offshoot of people who had left Tony and Guy Sassoon's and Sorby. So, you know, a real litany of greats as far as the hairdressing. So, great mentors in the salon world, but were any of them in and the editorial world? Absolutely. Or? Eugene Suleiman um, was at Trevor Sorby's and then came over to came over to the salon, which was fantastic. I came over to Kaslin Co. and took me on my first ever shoot. I got sent home on that shoot, so, yeah. If I what do you mean sent home, home, Eugene? Like, I got sent home by the photographer. Yeah, the photographer. Yeah, he, the photographer. Was that because you had no pants on? No, the photographer, actually. Uh, Eugene asked me to um, come up with something interesting, and I used the code, and I laid out a whole lot of long extension and was laying hairspray on top of it. Mm. Um, and. You know, the photographer was like, what do you think you're doing? And I was like, hopefully something interesting. Um, and he was not impressed that I had just taken over his cove. Um, I didn't really understand that at that stage that the cove is the photographer's domain. So it sounds like your first uh, attempt was a big failure and a lot of times people kind of... I think that it actually was the biggest success because what you learn and actually this comes from Caroline. I asked Caroline for a quote today. This is Caroline was the, the model I worked with, the 57 year old in Abu Dhabi on this actual first se of the series of shoots that I'm going to be doing. And she said, do something that scares you every day. And I think it boils down to that, not being scared of failure, realizing that failure is just a step. And I, I, everybody says, yeah, oh, that's a cliche. And I'm like, it, you know, I can't tell you how many times I failed. I was, a, I was an assistant for seven years. So I really wasn't good at the, you know, I wasn't well behaved, I wasn't disciplined. Um, you know, I worked um, and I was very keen, but had chronic attention deficit. So, and I think until I found People like Greg, Eugene, uh, John Burchill, uh, Ray Allington was a huge influence. Until I found those people, you know, I had a real problem getting to grips with everything. We have a, a real great question from Bobby Hansen. She's wondering, how do you not get static while doing all the brushing that you do? The hairspray. It's the I'm constantly putting the hairspray on my fingers and just running it through. And this is the one that you're working That's with from I Am Beauty. Flex form. You're just running it over. Yeah, this will come around that side and you can see there. So I'm actually put that pin around that last little piece of hair. I'm gonna hold that taut. I'm gonna push the pin in. 
If it doesn't go in, it means it's not on the scalp. I push it in and Sorel will tell me she feels that like a little gentle scrape on the scalp. Okay, we're starting to get like a pretty little fan going in the opposite direction here. I can start shaking this. Okay, at this point, I can start shaping all the way through. So this is probably the 15th tool you've used. Yeah, so this, yeah. Is, a, this is a classic fork though. Um, you know, something that a lot of the older hairdressers are really going, oh, I remember those, I used to use one of those. They're fab, they really are. They can, I mean, you know, classic fork gun controls all these little bits of hair as I work around the head. And shape it in. Um, great thing is they're tiny so if I feel a piece is that's popping out there I want to take that in. At this point I can go in again like I said do it horizontally rotate it and then put it flat. So you've only got the surface of the hair to con so you can see how it hides all the little pieces of hair. Put a tiny bit of hairspray on my finger and just run it over the surface and I'm looking for I the little soft bits like this that you can pull to a point. Um, if you wanted to use something like a clay or you know another stronger hairspray, you could do that at this point to make it really pointy. You could use a flat iron and crunch those ends just gently. If you're looking to kind of get a little bit more definition, clamp those ends together. Shape it so you can see it. Put in a curved shape there. Now, what if you just wanted to just keep it really clean and simple? How would, would you just blend just those pieces blend in? Just blend those pieces in and carry on rolling them around the top of that little knot. Just to be a bit more classic. Just a bit more classic. I mean, yeah, I think it's very easy to show you the classic. I want to kind of show you where you can take this again using the curve, a flat iron there, rotating the piece, rotating the flat iron, just using your wrist to rotate it all the way through to the end there tiny bit of hairspray on my fingers and just spread that out a tiny bit just to give me a nice little soft break on those ends it's actually really cool with color as well I mean that kind of plays into the, the whole contrast. stylist yeah I mean that with, with um, Caroline, she had grey hair, very long and grey, the same sort of length as Sorel. Um, that's why I was so excited to find Sorel. Um, because, you know, working with the long hair like that, is, it's a real challenge working with long hair. And I would really would suggest that if you're going to start practicing, make your life a little easier in the beginning. Right, let me just pull that out. And at this point, how are we doing for time? A good time for a second look. Uh, we're about an hour now. About an hour. Yeah, yeah we're we're just get one look today, and we'll see you later in the month for more looks. So, I mean, you've had a great audience, Peter. People have stayed and really are interested. I mean, I think again the authenticity of someone like you. Um, first of all, endorsing a brand that you actually believe in. I, you guys might not know this, but Peter is actually sharing an apartment here in New York, and he only has intelligent nutrients in the shower. Uh, I am shampoos and. I've so, used them pretty much uh, in shampoos and skincare. I've used pretty much exclusively for about two years. And I turned them on to me even before we started working uh, together with the brand. So I use the skincare, you can tell how long it's working for me. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying that you were using the product as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just started using it, loving it. Yeah. You've yeah. such a fantastic model. Thank you. so many great stand up for us. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe we should go for that. There. So, you know, how you can control those little bits if you're literally looking to kind of, if this is too much for you, you just literally pick it up with your fork comb and continue rolling all the way around. And as you tuck, just keep rotating for me. Mm -hmm. Keep rotating, and keep rotating, and keep rotating, and we come around to the front. Right, and at this point, if I wanted to do something a little softer, so I like it a little stronger, you could kind of take the brush in, get a little bit of softness going on the sides here. And this is, these are the editorial touches. You know, when you have like a little bit of softness there, a little bit of softness there, 
Right. Around the neck, I would like to keep that a little tighter and a little cleaner. So again, put the spray on the brush and really finish that up all the way. Yeah, that, the nape is, uh, is amazing to me. I just, that's always such a pretty thing. And as a hair cutter, I always love the way hair runs are. So to see it's beautiful hair to see it in a, uh, in a beautiful clean ponytail like that. Yeah, so it's something so simple. You know, you can kind of play with that long bit there, have it a little bit loose. I like things that look a little bit round. Um, we're going to have to take some pictures now. And we'll post those. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks to our yeah, wonderful yeah. model. Thank you, Peter yeah. Gray. Thank you. Uh, thank you to IM Beauty, Intelligent Nutrients. We really appreciate the support, and we're so happy to work together to bring great education to our community. Thanks to all of you that watched. We had so many viewers here, so much love and positivity. That's awesome. We'll see you again later in the week. Cheers.